What's up for dinner tonight? Is it tacos? Yeah, okay, good. We just usually do sit downs. Uh, it's like, I'm just I gonna love it. To toast it this way, but great. I don't care what you um, do with it. Is that, is that good for you? That's perfect. Look at that. Yep. Yeah. What are your names again? I'm Craig, and that's Jazz. Craig. Jazz. Jazz. And you're now on Jazz the Jazz. Team Richie YouTube channel. Here we are. <laughs> strongest, strongest team on YouTube. Is that I right? Call ourselves, yeah. yeah. Team, I mean, you already know, this is Greg Glassman. This is the founder and CEO yeah, of Yeah, that CrossFit. kind of thing. And I'm not the CEO anymore, Jeff Kane is. Jeff Kane is now the CEO. I'm chairman of the board. Today, we're just gonna kind of get to know him a little bit, talk around some of the changes, and just have a bit of fun with it. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let I'll, me get rid of this. These, are, these guys aren't helping at all. Yeah, <laughs> he's a man of iced tea. You should have asked her. So, you're having fun? I'm having a great time. Good. This is surreal for me to be here. Sat next to you. What's your, uh, what's your favorite movie? Pulp Fiction. I don't think I've seen Pulp Fiction. Have you seen Pulp Fiction? Seen, oh, wow. I've seen it. What? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I know, I know. Are you serious? I don't know what Pulp Fiction is, yeah. Well, see, that kind of thing. No Country for Old Men. I've not seen it. <laughs> yeah. That's a great movie. Did you see Whiplash? Yeah. Okay. Those are all great movies. How old are you guys? <laughs> 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 How did you come up with CrossFit? Where did you get CrossFit from? What, like, you know, this yesterday the discussion was um, I was recounting how the name CrossFit has no small inspiration from the absurdity of thinking that um, bike, run, swim, long is a good representation of, of uh, cross training. They, they have a, a whole lot in common, maybe not by method of propulsion, but by quality and nature of stimulus. Yeah. Okay? So, you know, they're, they're mechanically wonderfully different. And they're great. Yeah. They're great. But to hold that up is some uh, pinnacle of cross training is, is uh, it doesn't hold water. Yeah. So then where, where did it come from? Well, like, what, what, where, some of it, one, some, one day you must have, one day you must have gone, I'm going to create I used, I used Fran to prep for the gymnastic season for, for conditioning. I used Fran. I had a, a, a Sears Roebuck and Company, now, now defunct. Uh, I had a barbell set that I'd gotten from them, and I had a pull-up bar that went in the door jam of the garage. And I was doing Fran as a conditioning tool for a, for a ring routine. Kipping or butterfly or just strict? Um, some of both. Yeah. Just depending on, on where my head was at. Whether I was trying to just keep moving or get the best time. So then where did CrossFit come from? Like, you, there must have been a defining moment or something where you went, right, I'm going to create this and this is going to be, this is going to be CrossFit. I'm going to start the, the thing and I try was, and reach out to I people. I was training at a Gold's Gym in, uh, in Santa Clarita uh, and others, but predominantly there. And I was living in Santa Clarita. And um, I uh, left there and came up to Santa Cruz and went to the Gold's, well, there was a Gold's Gym here in town on Water Street, 420 Water Street. And I contracted for the training department there. And uh, the guy that owned the gym, the family that owned the gym, knew me by reputation from down south. And they had a pretty vast holding in the Gold's Gym world. I knew and know Dave Draper and, and, uh, and Larie here in Santa Cruz. Dave Draper's an icon of the bodybuilding days. And, and one of the, one of the, the two of them are two of the most decent people I've ever met. But I, I had friends and connections up here and uh, um, left the Gold's Gym here and went to a family fitness center and uh, stayed there briefly and uh, you know, a year. And uh, the word was that we submarine their training program, myself and uh, two other trainers with a contract where they were taking 30% um, right off the top. We were charging twice what their trainers were, 
but we put their trainers out of work. Three of us did. And so he showed me the graph where they had a training program with pretty nice revenue generation. Now we were getting all the money, but they were getting a third of the... And so I got booted. We were training there under the CrossFit name. And uh, that was the last time I cohabitated. You know, that's almost not true. Um, we went from there to, uh, to uh, with jujitsu friends. But that was a very different kind of thing. It wasn't a gym with CrossFit in the corner or CrossFit circulating around where the gym was global gym doing business as usual. Um, the jiu-jitsu school gave us uh, first a very small dedicated area, then a large dedicated area. And that was a, that was a, that was a very healthy relationship for us. We got, we got, we got to rub elbows and, and make friends with almost everybody in the uh, MMA community. So nice. maybe on the business side of it, but the athletes for sure. What's your background? Before um, all of this CrossFit stuff and everything, what, what's your background? I was a gymnast. Nice. Yeah. Could you ever hold the Iron Cross? Oh yeah. He was strong. He was strong. <laughs> I, was a, I, was a, I wasn't, I wasn't a, a, a great gymnast, but I was a good one. Yeah. You know? and, uh, but I was a very strong one. I was as strong as almost anybody. But we're working with a kid now that's, you know, I don't feel as strong, even thinking back, because there, there are young men doing things today that um, I just, we didn't think about doing. It's just a natural progression of fitness, I guess. It's amazing. You know, anything we can quantify, things are improving. And we debate about those things we can't. And I suspect that when we, the debate is only possible because you can't. What do you listen to, music-wise? Are you a country fan? No, not really. No? no. I'm a massive country fan. What do you Are listen you really? to? Are you really? But you know what? I'm not going to turn it away. And, and uh, when in Rome, etc., like a driving cross country, I, I, I enjoy it. But, uh, you know, you talk about what you buy. It almost seems like you don't buy anything anymore, right? It's like it's online. And I, I'm sure I do too, you know. YouTube premium, YouTube premium. Um, adult alternative format, new stuff. I don't want to hear the music that was playing when I was in high school. I know a lot of people do. You know, whatever the fuck was playing when they were in high school, they'll play that for the rest of their <laughs> lives. And I'm not that guy. So what's your go-to track? Like what do you listen to? Who's your artist? Does he play anything in the office? He does, and he'll play really great, fun song with meaning, right? Fun songs with meaning. Oh my god, that's um, that baby I'm shark. Baby shark. <laughs> no, 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 no. Take on me. Yeah. Oh, I love oh, take on me. Oh, I know that song. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you, have to, yeah. you have to watch this unplugged one that he, right? That's the song where it like goes up in octaves until you can't sing the octave anymore. <laughs> it feels like it. Really yeah. Nice you start squealing like a, like a goat. That would be that song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Willie Nelson's coming to town, I'd go see him, but that's, you know, so there, country. Obviously there's been a hell of a lot of change since January. Like, the, the focus of CrossFit has completely shifted. Just from like, obviously our audience is, it, it's a mix of people that uh, don't do CrossFit. It's people that do do CrossFit but aren't in it to be competitive. But there's also a lot of people at the end of this channel that do it to be competitive or do it because they love watching the games or you know, that kind, of scene, that kind of scene. So what would you say to those people that feel like, at the moment, you know, obviously the shift has just completely shifted. It's gone away from the games, which obviously kind of built up CrossFit a bit in a way, to now being full on health driven and the people that love the games and that side of things feel like they maybe just feel a little bit left. Well, you know what? I appreciate that perspective to the extent that I'm gonna tell you I'm glad you feel that way. Because in truth, nothing really has fucking changed at all. Yeah. It's just gotten better. The games have been improved. Um, eight regionals, some of which are kind of ghost towny. The idea of spending $2 million and being in the stadium where the, where the Olympics were held to send two kids, <laughs> to send someone to the games that lived a, a hundred miles south of San Diego is a little weird to me, you know? And, yeah. and, and why are there no Chinese people at the games on the regular? And someone from India and Pakistan, Colombia. Um, I, I had a different vision for the games. Um, a, a, a democratized games, 
I have affiliates holding competitions and, 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 and people in my employer there as judges and announcers and, but no one can say the word CrossFit, it's, that's nuts. And so we fix that. Um, we're gonna have, you know, at, at the games we could see who was uh, 35th in the world and who was 36th and 37th and I don't care about that. I'd like to see who the fittest person in the world is, yeah. maybe the second or third. And I'd like to know who the fittest Brazilian is, the fittest, fittest person from France, the fittest person from Kenya, you know. Um, there's someone here tonight who is training for the games from Iran. And they're, they're leading on the leaderboard, and so the, the games have gotten, have gotten better, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but look, what, what CrossFit is what's happening in 15,000 boxes. It's not what, what we think in our heads any of us, any that one or two of us, and it's certainly not um, the, the image on the landing page, but, but uh, this is true. Leadership is currently acutely aware of the fact that the most important thing that's happening in 15,000 boxes now, and the ones I'm gonna speak for, I'm gonna speak for the 10-year affiliate. Yeah. I have something in common with them. I've done that. I've stood there for 15, 20 years administering this thing in the sense of, you know, being there every day and and, uh, and knowing what's in, what's involved in being a, a successful trainer, um, and and by the way, now we have uh, about 500 ten-year affiliates, nice. and that number is going to be uh, closer to 2,000 by the end of the year. Nice. And if you talk to them, no, let me back up. Those are the people that have been coming to me catching me at the games and tapping me on the shoulders and letting me know that it's not about the games as if I don't know. Yeah. And so I, I, get, I get a regular dose of that and I'm gonna get that to stop happening. I'm gonna make it so that the 10 year affiliates don't tell me anymore that it's not about the games, that it's about something else. So many more people have lost 100 pounds than have gone to the games. 100%. And is the guy that invented the games. Now, so, so in my head, Craig, We've made it better. We've democratized the, the I thought the regionals were dumb. Um, I think the sanctionals are clever. I think they're perfect. Thank you. And, and the whole thing is exciting, but, but when you land at CrossFit, um, uh, the, the physiology, our take on, on health, our take on wellness, our take on on what's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, our take on human movement, and our take on, on exercise and, and adaptation and stimulus are all unique. Our, our model, our business model, our, the, the, our training is so special. Do you know that I don't know of another training program, um, physical training, to, you know, to become a, a personal, what call it, they call it a personal trainer, I hate that term. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, but I don't know of another training program that actually has a training element. And so you can become CSCS and, and have no idea really how to perform any movement yeah. of any sort and not even felt the forces that would correct. Mm -hmm. And so you don't, not only do you not get to have that experience, you would have no sense of how to impart that. And I've, and I've gone through their manual, Essentials of Strength and Conditioning, been through that many times, been through their material. It's bereft of, of, of meaningful training material. And, and ours is not. And you know, so what can you learn on a weekend? You can learn some rudiments, you can learn what your de deficits are, and you can learn what to do and where to go to fix them. Yeah, Jazz and I did it. We've done the, the it's level. It's a good one. course. Yeah, we love the level. Good. It's a good course. I Very really proud. Of it. Enjoyed it. Yeah. And I said even if it'd be such a nice thing if there was an option to do even a shortened down version, and for anybody starting CrossFit, it's just such a great concentrated way to. That's learn a, all that is a brilliant things. idea. It's a really. That could be almost tool. administered at the box level. Mm -hmm. People understand it in more of a mm -hmm. detail from so the start. Yeah, the so that your so that your punters the from the get go mm -hmm. had a clearer understanding of what was going on. Yeah. There you go, Jazzy. Just giving him the idea that you I, kept I, telling honestly, me for the years. I told you as soon. 
from a lot of people that obviously we we get a lot of contact with people on our videos we'll get 60,000 views every single day six seven days a week there's a feeling around it that there wasn't much communication like what would you say around that in terms of like it kind of just shifted overnight and then nothing was communicated the rule book took a while to come out and it just kind of I like that jolt yeah yeah I mean that was a that was deliberate you yeah. know and like shh, here it comes wham 190101 I think it was good for the staff I think it was good for the world look I've been I've been on the road for five years delivering the message that now you got slapped in the face with 190101 okay and I was tired of the you know I, I think there was a perception that the CEO had lost his mind and was off on the soda bullshit why the company the games continued to do its thing the games is the sideshow and the soda thing is the business yeah and uh, here we are you know and so and that was always the case and so while we were out um, fighting the forces that had the audacity to legislate against us, especially given the weakness of their position on health. Um, We've been learning all about it this weekend. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. How we they literally, soda companies will literally pay off scientists to yeah. put in, to just do the research that they want. Right, and make it come out good. And so now we get in this in the world of consensus science. We're weighing the number of studies and saying that the issue is undecided. But if you take the ones off the scale um, that were paid for by soda, this thing goes clunk. And what you find is that, that is that this stuff is no good for you. The stuff we saw this weekend from a, from a Robert Lustig, I thought was brilliant, fascinating. Look, that's my crew, and that's a little man in front there. His birthday. <laughs> He's been talking all day about, about, daddy, about birthday at daddy's work. So how come the changes, because obviously, you know, the, the games has been a big driving force for CrossFit. It has. It's not like, it's, oh. it's not. I'll, I'll accept that it will, it'll continue to be. I mean, go over to, yeah. go to games.crossfit.com and, and it, it, it's, you know, it, I think it's really exciting. And I've been asking, like, who's, who's likely to win in Brazil right now? You know, we're three workouts in, three of five. Because um, I really like the idea that, that, um, there was the first week there was some Italian that's on top the second week how did he how did she do where are they now yeah. by the third week you're watching two or three people and wham and now all of a sudden the the probability that those in the top five are it has become astronomical yeah and the ones that aren't there I mean unless lightning hits the group and it's just it's it's taking shape and I'm excited for what I presume to be the excitement in Italy, in France, in... in I can say that from the UK too. Well, because there's course. a couple of people, it's not like we have a Matt Fraser in the UK that sticks out and is someone that's like... It's the local guy. Who's going to win? And he's a good guy and she works as hard as anybody else. And, and, and you think that it's going to be that we don't see some upsets, you know? I'll change the, the programming some so there is potentially an upset. Maybe you have to play a round of cricket. So, you know, I, I don't, um, it's a game. Yeah. It's a game, okay? It's been made into a sport. I have no interest in making it a game show. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Armand. If I can answer that right now. It's a sport and not a game show. Um, <laughs> This is not the grid league. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a legit test of fitness. Yes, and you can film it with your fucking iPhone. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I can tell you how good that is. Some of the coolest stuff I've seen on the net from sport have been something that someone caught with a shitty camera somewhere. Yeah. You should see the piece of shit camera that, that, that Lauren filmed Nasty Girls with. That's before your time, but that thing had seen <laughs> More views than probably all the current videos, games related combined. I mean, it was crazy. They used to say at uh, Naval Special Warfare, any morning you would hear that soundtrack from that thing as people were watching that video, watching those three girls, three, three wonderful creatures race. Do you enjoy the games? Because for me, yes. outside, yeah, so this is, this is what I like fully wanted to understand and come here about. I love the game. Because a lot of people on podcasts and things like that, when you hear it, 
you get the the assumption that you're all about the health side and you really couldn't care less about the game side. No, um, Dottie Dumpling's Dowry is a burger joint in town in Madison that is amazing. Our hosts, from from the granular level of the small businesses like like Dottie's, um, all the way up to the to the venue management, to the head of the housing commission who who lets me use his home on the lake, to the to the police and firemen and people waving, um, the experience couldn't be better. Our conference is one of the coolest conferences on anything medical that anyone's ever been to or watched. We're, we're, we're letting those people speak that um, need to be heard and uh, um, uh, aren't going to be included in the traditional offering for reasons of corruption and, 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 and bad, bad influence. Um, I like the weather. Uh, what else? The people that come and say hi. Um, how much do I like people exercising, watching it? I guess it, I guess I do. Um, I love training people, but training someone—that's not watching people exercise. Yeah. And see, when I'm training you, we might be talking about your mom and 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 graduate school, but I've I've got a hammer and a chisel and I'm doing my thing. I'm creating something. Yeah. And you're my subject, and I and I love that. Like you like. Anyone that creates anything loves anything. I'm, I've got an odd pride in when I look at the bodies in the games and what they look like and where that came from. I know my, my, I see my signature in, the, in their bodies. I like that. Um, if I were training them, I would enjoy them more. Th thruster races, I don't care. And so, I, but also, I'm not there to watch that. I'm there to come and talk to the people that want to tell me that it's not about the games. Yeah. And they do. By, by, um, by the score. Yeah. I can see him in line. Oh, look, there he is. You know, it's Craig Howard, 10 year long affiliate. I mean, it's like they're going to tell me, they're going to tell me what it's like at their box. And no one's, no one's box is kicking ass because of the number of people. Was it Craig Howard? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I made that happen. <laughs> See? Wow. So he's, not, so he's here this weekend, and, he, and we've had this discussion before. Now, but he got he got a little. He thought it was about about a game show too. I mean, we we've all gotten older, and so it's a lot smarter. And you know what? You're really smart, and you're and you're young. But I'm gonna tell you this: you're gonna get even smarter. I hope so. You will. <laughs> you do. You play Everyone under. does. You get smarter. You too. Yeah. So for you, it's 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 not like. Do you watch any sports? Do you enjoy watching sports, or is it, is it just? Not I your would kind love of to thing? see if someone says if someone says um, this is maybe the greatest play in NFL history. I'll bust my ass to get in the room. I'll stop making my drink. I want to see it. Okay, cool. Okay, and yeah. I guess what? Well, yeah, um, seven. I've enjoyed so many seventh games, you know. But I'm I'm one of those fans. But you know what? When you stand on your feet all day doing this stuff, you kind of be nice to like. See someone play some music, or you know, I mean, it'd be nice to get out of that space. Yeah. For me, the physical province was at first refuge from my disinterest in academia and the uh, um, uh, rather uh, rigorous atmosphere in the house. And so I wanted to be the fuck outside, whether it was classroom time or at home. And so I was an outdoorsman by virtue of some kind of survival skill, and that introduced me to basketball, football, tennis, baseball, bike riding, and, uh, and uh, uh, vandalism. <laughs> you know, we were, <laughs> we were bicycling, we were outside doing all that shit. Yeah. And uh, so I, I like all of that. My buddy Will said when we were kids that when he got older, he wasn't gonna be sitting in the stands screaming for his kids. Well, he, he was a, uh, he played uh, baseball and his family came and his dad was there standing in the, in the stands screaming. And Will was, said he was going to do things with his kids. That he was, he, they were going to participate together. And he's he's a fifty something now, and he's he's he stayed true to that. He's indeed screamed from the stands not once, and done all kinds of fun, you know, rigorous physical outdoorsy, indoorsy, you know, kite surfed and bicycle riding, mountain bike and skis and all that. And it's, it's, I, I like that. So, so in that sense. Yes, yes, but uh, um, we had an offer to go, Dave and I, 
um, on the private jet of a NFL team or a very gracious, wonderful environment to go see the Super Bowl and sit in their suite with them. And, you know, I, I, I declined and it was a respectful decline in that I'm a, I'm a, not enough of a fan for it to be, I'm taking someone else's opportunity away. Yeah. There's someone else that would be, just would never forget the moment. And I'm likely to complain about it. And in fact, when I went to the Super Bowl for Reebok, I fucking hated it. Hated the Super Bowl and Reebok for sending me. So you, you, you're more, you're more, you, you enjoy- I watch it on TV though, and I love the commercials. So I don't, you tell me, do I like sport or not? I don't know. Yeah, you see, I don't either. <laughs> so you just, you, you enjoy the creation and not necessarily watching. You enjoy the, the chiseling and seeing what your creation has done for people rather than just watching the race at the end. To it. So, you know, this is a close one. Um, Andy Sakamoto versus Greg Amundsen and Fran, you know, like is down to the second. I thought that was cool. I love, I like sport like that. Excitement. Sure, sure. But thruster races, you know, I mean, I, there's a genuine excitement for the, for the, the open workouts that's happening at the gym. I don't confuse the coverage with that for that native enthusiasm, excitement, and participation. Yeah. Okay. Often when I'm asked about my thought about it, what I'm, be, what I'm being asked is, is do I enjoy the media? You know? And um, I don't have time for it. I don't have time for it. I enjoy the athletes. I enjoy the athletes. Do you get to hang out with many games athletes at the moment? I'm sorry? Have you ha hung out with any games athletes? Who, who's, who sticks in your head as like your favorite of all time that you've just hung out with? Oh, I gotta be really careful with this. Okay, uh, top five. <laughs> Annie Thor's daughter. To be introduced to Annie, and, and she's, she's got an emergency. In two hours, she goes up and the workout has muscle ups and she's never done nor tried one. And I'm the coach. And uh, that day, I think I did 400 muscle ups. And I kept trying to get her to do it and trying to trout up and I've got bloody wrists and I'm like, Annie, it's like this, it's like this. And, and she's just, you know, and, and Bertner just showed her how to do a first snatch and that worked. But in my effort, um, she couldn't do one. She wasn't going to do one for me. And so she still goes out there anyways and does like 10. The crowd <laughs> screamed her on top of the rings. So, um, She'll always be special to me, you know, to, and I thought that was a, and I, like, so what, the fool takes credit for it, right? I got her up on there. You must have been listening to what I said. <laughs> no, the crowd shouted her up on top of the rings, and that was, that was a cool thing. And to see her, see her do what she done. Um, Rich Froning is a gracious, gracious man. He's a good guy. Yeah, I, he, he's, he's, he's close to my heart. Um, there's so many, there's so many good people. The athletes are great. You know, we go way back to Josh Everett is a, is a dear soul, a friend. I'm a, I'm a from a probably 2016 onwards. Yeah. Kind of dude. You know, you, you came up. I came in the scene when I think it was exploding a little bit well, you know, in terms of the games. Yeah. Yeah. The game, the game, the games were exploding in the sense of the, of, uh, the participation, without a doubt, um, and the amount of money we were spending for sure was also another explosion. Um, and, and, and we were, we were getting better at, at recouping, but what you had was in a rapidly growing business, a sideshow that was growing faster, but breaking even. Yeah. So in a rapidly growing, profitable business where about 70% of the revenue is discretionary spend. You know, our line was said, sorry, 70% of the spend is discretionary, better yet. Um, I, have this, I have this sideshow that's growing more rapidly and breaking even. That's a, that's a terminal setup. Yeah. That's, a, that's a mistake. That has to be changed. And we've, we've changed that while de-emphasizing that aspect of things when you landed dot com, while building a living room set, while bringing the, the food back to the forefront, um, while featuring these, these wonderful, wonderful uh, um, uh, uh, 
scientists, physicians uh, that have from the wilderness given such an, an, an important, important message about what's wrong and, 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 and what is correct and that so many of them have their messages are, are, are coherent and, 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 and near identical with, with variations due to perspective and, and difference of opinion on things that ultimately may not matter. Um, uh, well, I could just go on and on. I, I really like where we're going, but listen, I put us here. And so someone gives me feedback. I talked to Dr. Michael Ray. And he's, uh, I'm just really, really impressed with where you've taken things. Greg, thank you. And I come off the phone and I go, you know, that guy was always really smart, right? And so I'm, I'm creating the, the I'm, I'm fostering uh, the community that exists largely in the form of the, of the 500 and counting 10-year affiliates. To open those doors for 10 years, get in the morning first thing and unlock the doors for 10 years. Um, those people, those people's lives have, have uh, changed and they've learned a lot and they've seen a lot and they know about uh, uh, weight loss, they know about diabetes. They know about diabetes. It's amazing how many of them, what they know about cancer. I'm not saying they're curing cancer, it's diabetes they're curing, type two. Um, but uh, uh, they know about aging. Uh, they've, they've buried grandparents perhaps, parents perhaps. Some of them have, ha didn't have children, now they're in elementary school, you know? It's just, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a market that I would be a fool not to, to address at that CrossFit.com level landing page. Yeah. And everything else is going to come of that, and that is Growing the Games, which is the sideshow. Um, all the beautiful community and all those things. Those are kind of the, an unelectable consequence of what it is that those people that are receiving that do. And so you could say that the landing page may not be for the masses, but I know, I know the box is for the masses. Uh, um, I've, got to speak to my, I've got to speak to my affiliates and the level one training staff and uh, 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 the physicians that number 20,000 in the US, it might be 40 to 60,000 globally that are doing CrossFit, that have MDs. I want to keep them with resources and information. I want to support those scientists that uh, um, give us intellectual cover for what it is that we know to be clinical realities. I mean, these are all these are all serious things, all grown up things that that the face of the website needs to do for just business reasons, philosophical reasons, and, and other reasons. And it doesn't mean that the parties aren't fun, you know. So basically, you had CrossFit as a as a core and as a training principle, and the affiliates are what come out of it, and you're trying to change people's lives. And then the games kind of just came out of that as like a side thing, just to test some of the fittest. And then it kind of grew and grew and grew and grew to a point where you're like wow, this is a lot bigger than we even expected it at the start. We want to kind of take it back to our core mission. Neither. It was neither health nor money, this other thing. Yeah. And so we're running a business making people healthy in the games of obscuring both, both realities. That this is a business that does what? Makes people healthy. Yeah. And, and, and brings that information to, to market. But then the way that I would look at it sometimes is maybe go, well, this, this games is growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. Why don't we kind of chop it in half and go, this is the game side, this is the CrossFit side. But it looks like you've kind of just gone, eh, that will kind of run itself, but let's focus back on the core mission. And I think, do you think you've done it as too big a shift or do you think the games will just keep growing anyway? I think it's gonna keep growing anyways, but um, I think it's gonna be cl clearer in people's eyes, the distinction. Yeah, because I just, I feel like maybe if you had CrossFit Games and CrossFit Health as two completely separate things, it may be less confusing for people because it looks like at the moment, especially when you go to a landing page, as you say, you're there to help the affiliates and you're there to impact the masses, not the games. Am I making sense for them or not? No, I think so. I think I, think I agree with I you. Think I think that it'd be fair to say that the, the games is kind of like 
would run its not run itself almost. I think the like new it doesn't need the attention. Like you're trying to, you you know you've got this platform and now you want to utilize it the best you can to help people's health and that's where your attention is needed. Your yeah, well, we've that's needed been happening. At the game. That's what's going on anyways. Yeah out there in the real world because for me the real world is is the 15,000 gyms that are unlocking their doors every morning okay in in those gyms very very few of them is the owner unlocking the door in the morning with a strong concern for the performance of someone that's going to be in the games if they are they won't see 10 years now there are some characters like Ben Bergeron and and uh, and, uh, um, you know, there are people that, that uh, uh, have run successful gyms and are attracting for their training and support fun. But as a general rule of thumb, at the point that a box identifies itself, and I've seen a few do this, I've heard of a few, identify themselves as a competition box, it's just about over. Yeah. You know, you can have a grand opening and a grand closing. Yeah. No one's going to pay you money for that. Because I think a lot of it, though, too, is like, you know, when you watch the CrossFit Games, I have a lot of people that come in just watching the channel or, or have said, like, look, we watch the CrossFit Games, and I, I never want to be a CrossFit Games athlete, but it looks fun to do. Mm -hmm. So they look at the fun sports side of things, and then the health is kind of secondary to that. They get into the box, and they learn about all the health things. Oh, okay. They're welcome, still. Because it's still fun to do. Yeah. Just sometimes... Especially when it's done. Yeah, because it just looks, I don't know, for me it's just like some people get inspired by the games to then come and do CrossFit and then learn the health things. Not, I don't know how many people will come in just going, I'm looking for the health benefits. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think anyone's going to come in looking for the health benefit. Um, I, and and the, 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 the message of, of CrossFit Health is let's start with the truth. And the truth is, is things are fucked up. Um, and so that's a lot of what that's about. But where the health happens is at the gym and it's around and because of that L1 kernel, the constantly varied high intensity functional movement, meat, vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, a um, uh, little starch and no sugar. Yeah. Um, and so if you come at this, I'm going there to get healthy, that makes sense. I and mean, you would go there to get healthy. Uh, how often does that happen? I don't think at all. If you come into wanting to compete in the games, I don't think that happens often either. I think the way people come into gyms, in fact, I'm kind of an expert on this. The way they come to the gym is someone who's a member of the gym says, takes them this. there, takes them there. I'll meet you there tomorrow at seven or picks them up. And so there's that hey, I saw everyone having fun and thought I'd swing by. I mean, I've seen those, but I know their names. I know, you know, Sally State was one across the street from her employment to ask. Um, the general reaction of the public that sees it is, is shy away. And, and we, the, the, the look of what we do, especially out on the street, we were, we were making radio reports. The CrossFitters are blocking SoCal again. You know, that was on the, the radio in the morning in between. Like, and, and the public wasn't appreciative. The neighbors were afraid. Everyone had reverence. It was a scary thing. It looked like some paramilitary weirdness. <laughs> Running down the street throwing a ball and people like Greg Amundsen and Annie Sakamoto and they were just like these Fittensteins, you know? <laughs> Fit, <laughs> Frankenfitters is what someone said. Um, no, but what happened is it's someone, one of those people that won't um, STFU about CrossFit, finally someone breaks down and goes to the gym with them. And there are people like Bruce Edwards um, that have probably brought in 25 or 30 people into, just into my clinical practice, into my training practice, because he wouldn't shut the fuck up about CrossFit and he kept bringing them in. So I think that's, yeah. that's, what's, that's the, the, what greases the, the skids. And the, and the thing that keeps those people there are the relationships they form and the net effect of the physiology, which again is the, the quality of the L1 kernel. Now, where's the competition part? Well, I can say the same. Like, I go into the gym every day and have fun. I without CrossFit and whatever, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd have many friends, if I'm gonna be honest. I was going in and out of the gym, That's like, every day. No, it's not true. This is true. <laughs> going in and out of the gym every day, you know, you, you, you nod your head at someone and you say, hey, and you see the same faces, but actually working out with people, and the community around it. Well, if, be... if, if, you know, I, I don't believe you because I, right, I cool. yeah, I think you would have, I think you'd have 
friends otherwise. But I, I appreciate that, and I get it. You have more friends. And, you know, it sounds like something nasty we'd say about someone we know. <laughs> that if it worked for CrossFit, you yeah. wouldn't talk to anybody. You know. I can relate to the first experience though. When I first went into a CrossFit gym, it's because my friends at work said, "Oh, come along to this thing," and then they were throwing the barbells down, and I was like. <gasps> what is this? <laughs> but then, you know, you get into it, you understand and if you have You're you have not fun intimidated and... going into another gym. There's something wrong with you. It's the most natural thing in the world. As a gymnast, um, your, your meet's Friday or Saturday. You'd like to get to the building on um, Thursday or Friday and you'd like to work out there. And you, if it's at all possible, you'd like to get there before the people who are in that gym every fucking day are there yeah. and you'd like to be on the gear when they come in and you'd like to keep it kind of friendly but you'd like to be spend enough time on a thing that it doesn't feel like you're at someone else's house planning a robbery <laughs> you know <laughs> and you could it, you know and a way was always different than on your own gear in your own gym with your own crowd and so you'd want to be the early intruder not the late one it's like a weird it's a weird head trip thing but I used, I knew that when I was training for Gold's Gym and traveling around. Uh, and I, I know it as the guy who started this whole thing. You walk into a gym and you, you know, you're at someone else's, you're in someone else's gym. What do you think of Jillian Michaels? Okay. I'm glad someone asked. <laughs> you know, uh, it's, she, I met her at Bob, Har one of Bob Harper's book signings and, and she was uh, wonderfully gracious and complimentary. And uh, she was on, top of the world and things were going great and and I know um, uh, I guess you know people look at their social media and, and numbers and it matters to them and I I know that she's seen better times and kind of lives on that in that uh, pop media space and and uh, She's also promoting SodaStream, which has been bought out by Pepsi. I, I know of, of all that, and, and I've kind of had someone kind of peek at it and see uh, what the current relationship is with SodaStream, and I don't get a real sense of that. But, uh, you know, you went there, I didn't. Um, are, are we looking and wondering if that's what this is? She acts like it. She acts like it. Um, but, but, you know couple of things. One is sometimes there's, there's something so obviously deficient in your critics' delivery and the quality of their thought, um, the strength of, 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 their, of their argument, that it's, you can be pretty comfortable to, to let them just keep doing what they're doing. And so on a very profound level, um, the more she runs her mouth, I think the better we look. I'm, I'm, I, I, I can tell you I'm proud to, to uh, uh, not be at anyone to be confused with her, her methods, her approach, her videos, and the stuff that we have produced. I mean, that there was one meme going around with her doing something with the kettlebell that may be the single most dangerous thing I've ever seen done in a gym. Might be the single most dangerous thing I've ever seen done in a gym. It, there must be... It just I'm, I'm thinking. I, I can't. I don't. I don't know what I've seen that would compare to that. It's. It, 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 you know. I've seen things happen. I've seen one-offs. You know, someone in the rafters that shouldn't be. That kind of thing. Um, I, I saw someone doing a handstand upstairs in the gym with an open window. Um, yeah, in the mezzanine. That's a pretty. That's a pretty bad. But I've never seen anyone put a whole class in front of the windows deliberately. And and that's what that looked like to me. What she yeah. was doing. And so. She's, she's not a serious trainer. She's not a serious thinker. I think she may be a serious representative for something that really... Uh, uh, she's know. just trying to stay relevant. There's, there's, there's that for sure. For that for sure. But what kind of relevance do you want, you know? Being a dingbat relevance and, and you know... And I, like, I, had to, I had to go look who she was. People go, what'd she do to her face? I'm like, what do you mean? I look, and that was sad. I mean, I don't, it's, the whole thing's, the whole thing's kind of pathetic. Basically, to end this, Greg doesn't not, Greg doesn't hate the games. Or Julian Michaels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the games are going to continue to grow kind of as they are. 
because people love competitive fitness. You may not love watching it, but you love creating it and the things that it can do for people. Sure, sure. And CrossFit is just taking it back a little bit and trying to bring it back to the science and trying to create that environment for people that just go in and just be fit and healthy and have fun and make friends and do how it is. That part is really important. Yeah. The making friends, you know, the fact that there are people there with their grandmas. And did you see the morning class, our, our special population? Uh, the, those whose needs have been undermet were, were catering to a group of people that no other gym concern in the world honestly wants in their gyms. And these are people that are, that are uh, very senior and uh, people that are uh, 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 mass challenged, you know, dramatically so in some cases. And we've tucked them under our wings. We've had some move from that class to the regular morning class. And you know, that's a graduation worth crying over. No, I mean, look around. There's crazy cool things happening here around which we're, we're all very proud. And we're proud of the games athletes too. Especially the first year, there's always gonna be a couple of tweaks that you're gonna to have to make. There's always gonna be changes sure. and sure. the sanctionals are cool. And the games are gonna be even cooler this year. Thank you, brother. You're great. Now, thank, thank you for sitting down with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it.